Hey guys, this is Gunter from alerttimelapse.com. Today I'm going to make a new tutorial to show you how to achieve the holy grail of time-lapse photography, perfect day-to-night and night-to-day transitions. The last years there have been a lot of development in this area. There's a couple of uh, tools, hardware tools, software tools that will help you to do this kinds of shots. But one of my favorite tools still is QDSLR dashboard. It's a very easy to use application, which is very major, which works very, very well. And today I'm going to show you how to set it up and how to get a full automatic recording of a day-to-night or night-to-day transition. So the first thing that you need is DSLR dashboard. Of course, it's an app for PC, Mac, smartphones, Android and iOS. The only exception on iOS, it's called Control My Camera these days. But I'll link to the sources where you can download this app in the video description. It's around about 10 bucks, so I guess this is very well invested money. To connect your smart device to your camera, it depends a little bit on which camera and which smart device you have. Usually, I prefer a direct Wi-Fi connection, so if the camera has a built-in Wi-Fi, you can just connect your smart device to the camera and then just launch DSLR dashboard and you will be good to go. If not, you could check if you can use an USB connection. For some cameras you can also use an OpenWRT router to just may enable Wi-Fi on the camera. Um, you'll find more information about that in my Alert Time Lapse forum. So first thing I'll do now is to do some basic setup. First is set the camera to M mode. Make sure that the auto ISO is off so that you're in full manual control of the camera. Then set the camera to shoot RAW plus JPEG and make sure to set the smallest JPEG that your camera offers because we only want to transmit the smallest JPEGs that we can from the camera to the smart device and not waste time transmitting larger images. The rest of the setup would be like for a regular time lapse. Just make sure to focus your camera, turn off autofocus, turn also off the vibration reduction if your camera or lens have this built in. Put the camera on a tripod, please use something more sturdy than this one is for demonstration purposes only. <laughs> Next thing would be to turn on Wi-Fi on my camera and grab my smart device, connect to the camera. Now I can start DSLR dashboard and I will get some options to connect here. But before you connect, just go to the settings once. Uh, make sure to have checked keep screen on and uncheck show capture history after capture and image review after capture. Okay, once you've done that, you can just choose the right um, connection for your camera. In this case, I will click on Nikon to connect to the built-in Wi-Fi on my Nikon camera. So now you enter the main screen of the DSLR dashboard. We just skip this and go directly to the LR time-lapse screen. And this will be your cockpit to capture the holy grail sequences. Now that we've set up our Wi-Fi connection and entered the LR time-lapse screen, it's time to define some settings here for our holy grail recording. First thing that you could do is just capture sample. This will make the camera release the shutter and will just transmit one image to your tablet so that you can see the histogram and judge if the current exposure is right. If it isn't, you can just use the plus minus buttons here next to shutter speed, aperture and ISO to just change the, the settings. I can just use minus here to decrease the shutter speed and then just capture sample again. Now you'll see we have a perfect histogram. We can use this as a starting point. Let's quickly see what the other settings mean. 
Now the first thing to decide is if you're going to shoot a sunset or sunrise. In this case, we are going to use a sunset. The next thing would be to set the boundaries for longest exposure maximum ISO. If you don't see the aperture in your UI, you can just scroll down, go to settings and toggle use aperture ramping. This will enable the aperture also. Let's start with longest exposure. What to consider to set the longest exposure is your interval. Of course, if you have an interval, for example, of six seconds, then a longest exposure time of four seconds would just be fine. Then you would have two seconds dark time in between. In this two seconds, the camera will transfer the preview to the tablet, the histogram will get analyzed and the tablet can decide if it will change the settings on the camera. Don't make this dark time too short, otherwise the app won't be able to control the camera in between shots. Two seconds dark time for the beginning is fine. If you have a very good setup, a very fast setup, very small previews only, then you can lower that dark time. So in this case, four second longest exposure for an interval of six seconds would be just fine. Why does aperture 1.8? Just remember that if you ramp your aperture, in this case from 5.6 all the way up to 1.8, you might get changes in vignetting, you might get changes in depth of field. So consider if you want to do that. Otherwise, you can just choose a widest aperture that's a little bit smaller than the biggest aperture that your lens offers. The last thing would be maximum ISO. In this case, I will just leave it to 3200. Now there is only one thing missing, that's the intervalometer that will control your camera. I like to use an external one. I will be using the Alert Time Lapse Pro Timer 2.5. It's a very streamlined device that I developed for time lapse shooting. It has a very high performance. It allows to shoot with very small dark times. You can use fractions of seconds for intervals and so on. You will find more information about that timer on the alerttimelapse.com website. But you can, of course, use any other external intervalometer as well. I just recommend to use an external one instead of the one built in into DSLR dashboard because that one is not really accurate. And if your tablet crashes for some reason, your whole recording will be gone. If you use an external intervalometer, you can just restart the shooting after a crash and the DSLR dashboard app will continue where it left off. So just go ahead and program your external intervalometer. We'll just set it to six seconds here and put it on the camera. Perfect. Now that the camera is being released, you can just hit on Display Next JPEG. DSLR dashboard will be listening for the camera to transmit images. And if you trigger Display Next JPEG, it will just fetch the image from the camera. Check once more if the histogram has the right shape. It's important that it's not overexposed. And if so, then you can go to auto mode, just switch on auto holy grail, and this will make everything happen automatically from here on. That means DSLR dashboard will take care that the histogram will stay like it is. It won't underexpose. It won't overexpose, we'll just keep that brightness. And an indicator for that brightness is the luminance value at the top of the screen. This value will be decreasing while it gets darker during sunrise. And always when it falls below the reference value, DSLR dashboard will adjust one of the settings, exposure, ISO, aperture. Now there is only one last thing to consider. The Auto Holy Grail will take care that the images will always have the same brightness across the whole recording. That means that if you start at bright daytime, you might get images during nighttime that are a little bit too bright. And that's why you can change the reference value. Here we have plus and minus buttons next to reset reference. You just Hit the minus button, you will lower the reference value and the plus button will increase the reference value. So during a sunset, you might 
have to click a couple of times on the minus button every 20 minutes or so just to decrease the reference value. But there is also a way to automate this. If your tablet or smartphone has a GPS built in, then you might use the Auto NTC. NTC stands for Nighttime Compensation feature to automatically ramp down the reference value during your recording. That means the tablet will just check the GPS, it will know where on earth you are and it will know exactly when is sunset time, it will know when it's astronomical dawn and it will then make sure that the reference value gets lower and lower during sunset until astronomical dawn. 2.0 is just a factor, so at the astronomical dawn you will have half the reference value than when you started. Just experiment a little bit with this, but normally there is not too much reason to change the values. For me, mostly it works to just turn on the Auto NTC button and just let QDSLR dashboard do its job and it gets perfect results for me. And the good thing with this app is, and that's why I mostly use it, it's really stable. It doesn't mess up your shots and I think that's one of the most important things when recording time lapses because we all know it's a lot of effort to find a great subject, to find a great situation, a great sunset and so on to capture. Guys, this was the holy grail of time-lapse photography. Super easy, isn't it? So with this simple tips for recording the holy grail and my other tutorial where I show you how to edit those sequences, you will be a pro in mastering the holy grail of time-lapse photography, perfect day-to-night and night-to-day transition. There's one more thing. If someday you decide to buy one of those cool sliders to do the camera movements, it's exactly the same technique. The slider controller will be releasing the camera instead of the intervalometer and the DSLR dashboard will be listening for the images to come in and eventually decide to change the settings on the camera. So it's exactly the same procedure. And now it's up to you. Go out, shoot those cool sunrises and sunsets that a couple of years ago not even professional filmmakers could do. If you want, show your results in my forum. I'm looking forward to see them. See you soon on lrtimelapse.com. Bye-bye.